This is the 2024 Toyota Sequoia Capstone. Is it worth your consideration? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. I've got Carrie behind the camera and we're here at Yoakum Toyota in Shreveport, Louisiana. This is our first look here on the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel into the Sequoia. Kind of hard to get our hands on, but we finally did it. So let's dig in and see exactly what you get with this model. Very aggressive, rugged look, that's for sure. And when we come here, we can almost do a full video on the headlight housing by itself. And normally I'll talk about how you might see kind of a flickering effect with the blinker right there. No, that's actually happening as far as it kind of is fading out as it blinks right there. That's a cool effect. I like that. Not something you see very often. And then LED headlights right here. I'll let Carrie come in and show you. Now, I'm not going to try to blind you, but if you're wondering what this light for is that's out down there, that's going to be your high beam headlight. So that's a good thing. Obviously, LED headlights, LED daytime running lights. And then as we work our way down here onto the lower portion of the bumper, we're going to also find right here that you have your fog lights. From what a lot of you have told me, that's a big deal. You like having fog lights. And I think that's a very good location lower to the ground because obviously that's going to help you to see things. Maybe you live in a really dark area. That's a good thing. A nice large grill here. I'm going to get out of the way and let Carrie show you what's going on there. And one thing you'll notice if he comes in on that Toyota crown, you're going to notice the blue highlights. If you're wondering what that's about, that signifies that this is going to have the hybrid powertrain under the hood. And even at that, watch over here, <laughs> we're going to try and keep care from getting run over. There's a lot going on around us. This is a four wheel drive model. So I'm going to have Kerry come around here to our tire and wheel combination because I know a lot of you like to know what's going on there. So what is our size going to be? Well, when we come over here and look at the width, it's going to be 265 so wide I almost can't get my hand all the way across. A lot of tread on the ground. You're going to have a 60 series sidewall wrapped around the 22 inch wheels. Now some of you may or may not like what you have here because you have some chrome not only there but also on our mirror caps right here. These are power adjustable heated and power folding side view mirrors. I'll show you that actuation in just a minute here when we turn the ignition off, but I wanted to make sure that was on so that I could show you something else that I know is a big deal for a lot of you. And that's going to be those turn signal indicators built into the side view mirrors. Here's what your remote looks like in case you were curious. Sturdy remote, small, but it is nice and light. So easy to deal with, easy to put away. We're gonna have a little bit more of the chrome right here on your door handles. Kind of an old school thing right here. If your battery ever dies, and you can't use the remote to lock or unlock the vehicle. There is a key that you can use. Obviously, that's where you're going to use it. Up top, we're going to have the roof rails with the crossbars. So the good thing about that is that that really helps you increase the opportunities for space for cargo. You get out on the road for a nice long road trip. Maybe Aunt Edna is being a bit unruly and you need to stick her up there. You just never know. That should support her weight because she doesn't weigh a whole lot, does she? And again, a little bit more of that chrome, but I like the design of the windows right here as we go around with that trim and how it comes back to a point right here. Just some really nice body lines overall. One thing that I would like your opinion on, you'll notice that everything is body colored. This is wind chill pearl, by the way. Would you rather have maybe some kind of a black around the fenders right there? I'm always curious to know what your thoughts are. And as we work our way back here to the tail lights, well, you're going to see that same effect with your turn signal indicators, that really cool effect. That gives you a good reason to use your blinkers. You know what I mean? For those of you who know how, some of you do and some of you don't. I'm always disappointed when I'm driving behind a new Sequoia and I say, man, I was really hoping they would use their blinkers so I could see that cool effect. Gives you a good reason to try and do that. Now, right here, Honestly, a lot of the time I'm going to say I'll sound the gong on having that exposed rear window wiper. In this case, there's really no place to hide that away up here with the way the rear roof spoiler is designed. So I can't really do that. Let me finish things off back here. Everybody's going to know it's a Sequoia when they pull up behind you because you have the name prominently displayed right there. Again, going to be in chrome, but a very clean look here on the rear. Now, one thing that is very impressive here are the numbers of horsepower and torque and ultimately towing. Let's talk about that 
as we pop the hood. For those of you who are looking for a full-size three-row SUV, but you're saying the one caveat, Tom, is I want a hybrid powertrain, here is a great option for you. The iForce Max Twin Turbo V6. 437 horsepower is an impressive number, but the torque numbers are even more impressive at 583. Made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission. And as Kerry is showing you around right there, I'm going to come through the scene real quick and we'll come over here to the window sticker and give you those really important numbers that I know you're interested in. MPGs, 19 city, 22 highway, 20 combined, and five gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Kerry meet me over on the other side here. And as he is working his way over, I'm going to come here into the interior. There is a button here for opening. In fact, I'll let Kerry come and show you real quick. Here's what you're going to do to open your gas door. And the good news about that is, you know what? You don't have to worry about whether the gas door is locked or unlocked. It's always locked until you push that button. And here's something that I think a lot of you are going to like. You don't have capless fuel fill. A lot of people seem to not like that. Have the old fashioned gas cap. Does it have the old fashioned sound? Nah, eh, not really. But in case you were wondering, the whole reason we're here is you have a 22 and a half gallon gas tank. And one thing I wanted to show you that we talked about earlier but didn't show you is the power folding side view mirrors. Now there is a little bit of an interesting trick here. Earlier I didn't show you because the ignition was on. But here is something that you might want to know about. If the ignition is on, you can use this button to control the position of those power folding side view mirrors. And one more thing I want to make sure we show you here, the power assist steps that you're going to find here on the capstone trim level when you open the doors, obviously all four doors, those are going to pop out from under the vehicle. And then when you close the door, they're going to go back under. And you can see that they stay deployed for a little bit of time to make it easy in case somebody needs to hop in or hop out quickly, depending on what's going on. So. Let's move back here and talk about the power tailgate. There are a number of ways to open this, including the hands-free feature. And you can either use the kicking motion you just saw me use right there, or you can swipe your foot across. So that has a lot of advantages. And I'm gonna let Kerry show you what's underneath the rear of the vehicle, something you don't normally see on a lot of vehicles with a hybrid powertrain, a spare tire. So for those of you who are wondering, that's good news. That's a great selling point. And you can tow up to 9,520 pounds. Those are some pretty impressive numbers. And we have the net right here. That's going to help out with cargo space. I'm going to let Kerry show you around. I'm going to get out of the way a little bit right there while he shows you around. And I tell you that you have 22.3 up to 86.9 cubic feet of cargo capacity and you can see that there's a lot of space no matter what. You have a reasonable amount back here. Here is your cargo cover, by the way, which goes in a couple of different places. And when you put the seats down, which is interesting to see, watch this. I'm just going to hold those buttons down. When you take your hand off the buttons, your fingers off the buttons, I like the fact that they continue to fold down. Some of the competitors of this Sequoia, don't do that. And while Carrie's standing right there, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to come in here and we're going to put this seat down. You can lay these flat. You'll have a pretty much level load floor right here. Obviously, that seat goes down too. We have a lot more to talk about far beyond that, although I don't know how good of a view we can get you from here, but we'll show up from a couple of different angles. You do have a panoramic sunroof in my personal opinion, and in Carrie's too, as we are looking at the Sequoia, you should probably have a rear sunroof back here too. That's going to provide a little more light for your rear seat passengers, at least during the day. And for those who wanted to see everything maximized, well, here you go. So I've folded everything flat. There you go if you want to see that. And I like the fact that you also have the first aid kit that comes right here. Obviously, you can Velcro that to the back of the seat. Hopefully, you won't need it, but when you do, easy to gain access to, just pull it right off. And for those of you who might have noticed this button right here and you're wondering, what exactly is that? Well, it's something that's very unusual. You don't see this on a lot of vehicles anymore. I'm going to push that and you'll notice the window pops up. 
you don't get that very often. So if you just wanted to gain access to this area right here for some reason, or put something in, or take something out, or heck, have something sticking out, kind of like a truck, maybe some two by fours or something, well, there's your option. All right, let's talk about what your second and third row passengers will find. We'll start with the door panel. I'll let Kerry show you what's over there with him. Now we're going to have the privacy shade. You can pull that up. I'll let him show you how that works. It is a manual shade, but your rear seat passengers, or should I say middle row passengers, can put that in place if they want to. And how about the armrest test? Let's see if Kerry gives us a thumbs up. That is comfortable. I've got my arm over here. Now, one thing that's interesting, I'll let Kerry show you this. You can almost get your hand or your arm stuck between this area and the armrest, but I don't know. That just, it's kind of funny how that works. I just kind of noticed that. Kind of an interesting little thing. Not a bad thing necessarily, but that's what it is. Upper and lower door bins. You don't have a ton of space with that upper door bin right there, but you do have a lot of space with the lower door bin, so that's a good thing. And overall, I must say, I'm impressed when it comes to the colors here. We have the black and white interior, kind of along the lines of the BMW X7. Don't crucify me for that, but that's what we say we were thinking of as we were talking about the vehicle and kind of looking at everything. And for you parents out there that are going to have child safety seats here, here is a big benefit for you when it comes to the latch system. All you have to do is hook things up. There's no covers to remove, nothing to keep up with. That is a winning situation. And before we talk more about that area, I'm going to let Kerry show you. Number one, here's the recline on the seat. You can see the difference. This seat, I don't think most people are going to have it pretty much at a 90 degree angle is what we have here. But you can see over there on the passenger side where Carrie is, that's how far back these seats recline. Some of you have asked to see that in these videos, so I'm trying to tell you about it. Now, one thing that's interesting here, kind of a flip-flop compared to what we normally see on most vehicles, these seats are stationary. Let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to move that seat up. Notice that there's no track right here. But what's interesting, it doesn't mean Toyota made a mistake. So I'm going to hop into the back seat here and put this seat back in place. I'll let Kerry do what he thinks is best as far as maybe he needs to move that seat out of the way. I don't know. But that's out of the way. But what's interesting is what you find right down here. Look at that. You can actually move these seats back and forth. Now, they're as far back as they'll go. I do have to say... One thing that's interesting here is the floor itself is a little bit high, but sitting back here in this third row, I have a little bit more space than I expected with my legs. I'm five foot ten. I don't know how well Carrie can show you that. I might have to sit a little bit lower in the seat, so <laughs> I'm sure not moving the seat up. Kind of interesting how the floor is higher up like that, but that's the way it is. Now, let me see if I can get out of the way here. Remember how I showed you those shades over there on the doors? Well, your third row passengers have the same thing. Not something we see in every vehicle. Also, you're going to have your air conditioning vents up here. I think that's a better location for that. Some vehicles have them down in this area where the panel is right here that has the cup holders and everything. So that's probably a little bit better to have the air blowing down instead of blowing from down here. Seems like car makers should think about that when they look in their own house. That's why your vents are on the ceiling. Just makes more sense instead of being in the floor or something like that. And cup holders here. Now, one thing that is going to be different is you're going to have a USB port over here on this side, but not over here on this side. It's going to be right here, by the way. If you look right here, you don't see it right here. So kind of interesting how that works. And then you can recline these seats. Let's see here, let me recline this one back and then I'll bring the other one forward. And hopefully Carrie can show you that's your max recline position for those of you who are wondering about that. Obviously a couple of cup holders back here as well. And there is a release on the back of the seat. In fact, you can see it well on this side. So if the middle row seat passengers don't let me out, all I have to do is do that, and there we go. I can hop right out. And here's something interesting. I talked about earlier how there wasn't a USB port on this side. Well, good thing we did a little looking around because it is located in this area. Not quite sure why it's in two different areas other than the fact that you have a little bit of additional space right here that is not over here on the left-hand side. 
All right, we showed you how these middle seats recline, but they don't, they don't do anything more than just stay stationary, but you do have a lot more space here, more head space, and definitely some more leg room here. That's gonna vary depending on where the front seats are set. And right here, we have the little tray that kind of, you could call it a center console of sorts, but you have the cup holders here and a little bit of space here. Kind of wonder if that shouldn't maybe be a little bit higher up. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comments section. And we're going to find rear seat pockets on the side of, or the rear of each seat. And something that I think is very interesting here, you have a couple of oh crap handles. This one's really more for just helping to get in and out of the vehicle, I guess, but it could use, be used as an oh crap handle, but in the more traditional oh crap handle position right here. And you're also gonna have the air conditioning vents up there again. But the thing is, if you're thinking, well, maybe that's not enough airflow, well, we'll pan down here to the center console on the rear of the center console, kind of a command center because you have the air conditioning vents there. You also have the controls here for fan speed and obviously for temperature. Now this is single zone for the rear seat area, but check this out. You have ventilated and heated seats here in the middle row. We'll also have the household power outlet and couple of different options on USB A and C. So I always wonder why there's no USB B ports. Well, maybe that's why, because when you say USB B, it just doesn't sound right. I think I just answered my own question. One more thing before we hop into the front seat, there are armrests back here. And depending on where you want to set that armrest, just move it up. There's a click that you're going to hear. So kind of interesting. It almost seems like it should stay level because it just doesn't seem as comfortable like this. Not necessarily a big deal, but at the same time, when it's all the way down, there you go, you have to kind of pick it up just a little bit to get it even. But it's there, so we might as well tell you about it. And for those of you who are saying, hey, Tom, you haven't given us the price yet, $86,171. I'll let you think about that for a second. So let's show you what else you get for that price beyond what I've already shown you. And I'll let Carrie show you the door panel over there. Obviously, there's going to be a few additions compared to what I have here on my side. Nice large door bin. Uh, the upper door bin, not quite as big, but the lower door bin, definitely a lot more space. But one thing I do like over there for the price point here, it seems like it maybe should be here on the passenger side, but it's only on the driver's side. Seat memory. Tell me what your thoughts are where that is concerned. And obviously, power windows. I do like the fact that even though you have the armrest down here in the traditional location, a lot of people put their arms up here. That's a nice wide area, a little bit bigger. And I like the fact that it doesn't really have a curvature to it. So it's really more useful in that respect. So I'm going to take advantage of the grab handle, even though I don't really need to. It's there if people want to use it to hop inside. And I'll let Carrie do the same. We're going to do things a little differently than we often do here. And there's a very specific reason for that. I'm going to let him close the driver's side door and then hit the ignition button and show you the graphics that come up on the screen. That button's kind of hard to find if you're not used to doing it. So here we go. There we go. The animated graphics. Kind of cool. I think that's a pretty neat thing to see there. A very modern look with the dashboard. And we'll get back to that. But I want to show you what's over here on the passenger side first. I really like the way everything looks and is designed here. If you have kids that have ink and stuff all over their fingers, well, I hope they're not up here doing this a whole lot with the black and white interior. The white definitely going to fingerprint up, so you better keep an eye on those unruly kids. In here is a very large glove box, although I will say there's literally everything in here at the moment except for gloves, but you have a lot of room in there. And here's something that I've never really seen before, I don't think, a very light, feather light <laughs> glove box cover. Just something interesting that I noticed there. Now, I don't know, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, here we go. You can conceal away the cup holders right there if you want to, but we're going to keep that open for now. And here is your wireless charging pad, so that's going to work well. You can get a nice large cell phone in there. Your shifter right here, not push button, that's good. Nothing unusual for Toyota, but I know a lot of people don't like the push button shifters. And as we work our way back here to the nice, large, and I think appropriately built, as far as the height goes, center console, plenty of room 
for, to use that as an armrest for the driver and the passenger. And a couple of different options here for gaining access into this area. But one thing that is interesting, you have a button to open this on the passenger side and on the driver's side. And when you do, you find the safe right here. That's a nice option if you need a safe. You can see that you can use the keypad right there to open that if you want to. So nice to have that. I don't know if I can open that or not. It doesn't look like it. I don't have the combination. But also a couple of USB options again, USB-C, USB-A and our space right here as well. And for those of you who are fans of multiple driving modes, here is the drive mode selector. And I'm gonna let Carrie show you on the dashboard what we have where all of that is concerned as we work our way through that. And one thing I did notice earlier is not only do you have cool graphics, but one thing I would like to see more automakers do is when you turn the ignition off, depending on what driving mode you are in, whether it's eco or normal right there, or you're in sport mode, when you turn the ignition off, it'd be nice if the vehicle just stayed in that mode. There are a few out there that do that, but not very many. And just an overall nice modern look with your dashboard. Also your steering wheel mounting controls. I'll let Carrie show you what all is there as far as the steering wheel itself goes. The steering wheel is nice and large, very comfortable. That's a good thing. It seems to fit the vehicle itself and something else that I really like here, that I think a lot of you talk about on my Honda Pilot videos, in fact, I'm glad Carrie's showing you what is there. It is power adjustable, tilt and telescopically, so quite a few nice things there. But one thing that I know a lot of you have talked about with, say, the Honda Pilot, another three-row SUV, maybe not quite as large as what we have right here, but it has to do with the size of the center screen. This definitely being a lot larger than what we have there. A very easy thing to use. So you're going to have your built-in navigation. I'm not sure if I can get to that here. Let's see. One way or another, you know it's there. It doesn't look like it's going to let me do that, but we'll look through what we have. Now you obviously can go into your radio and connect your phone, which is wirelessly connected. And then you can go into vehicle right here. If you want to go into different areas of the vehicle to see what's going on, make changes, all that kind of stuff. It's all there. It's not difficult to do. And then if you want to go into personal info, there you go. We're not going to do anything with that. But just to show you what's here, your Bluetooth and devices, if you need to make changes there, you can. Notifications, Wi-Fi, display. You can see what all is here. Very easy to deal with. And I'm going to let Kerry put the Sequoia in reverse since he's in the driver's seat and show you it's right here. He sh and by the way, for those of you who want to know how to use the windshield wipers, well, there you go. It's right there on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. So we don't normally show that, do we? Maybe we should start showing that. Now we're gonna go into reverse and show you the multiple camera views here. You can see your nice bright trajectory lines and you can see the overhead view. That's nice to see and then we're also going to have the front camera view right there. Our camera views from the side view mirrors. Well, let's see, there we go. A couple of different views there. And then go back there. Carrie was going to show you how you can change the position of the trajectory lines, depending on where the front wheels are turned and which direction the vehicle is going. So that's going to work pretty well. Nice and bright, I like that. I think even if the sun was shining brightly today, we kind of have a partly cloudy day today. I think that would still work well. And across here, you can see that you have your buttons for controlling the air conditioning, everything here, some other one touch buttons as well. A pretty simple system to figure out. And obviously you're going to have dual zone climate control. And just as was the case with the rear seats, we're gonna have heated and ventilated seats as you can see here. So there's your heated three stages and ventilated three stages. We actually need the ventilated seats today as we're gonna be in the high 70s here in Northwest Louisiana. I don't know if I'd want to keep the heated seats on. And another USB option right there. So I tell you what, there's a lot going on here but one thing we haven't ever done here since this is our very first Sequoia to show you here on the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel, the test drive. Let's see what it's like. And one more thing before we hop out on the road for the test drive. If you're wanting to go into four-wheel drive, here's how easy it is to do. I'm going to let Carrie show you how that works. 
there is your control and you have to see as you can see it says to push down on that you can go into four low or four high depending on what you need i'll tell you what for those of you who live in areas where you deal with a lot of snow and ice that can come in very handy as we pull up to the red light right here one thing you might notice I don't know if you can see it as well because we have a little bit of a different view compared to what we normally do since Carrie and I are both in the vehicle. But looking through the rear view mirror, well, with the seat or the headrest on the seats in the rear area back there being in their upright position, it's kind of hard to see out of the rear window. Well, guess what? There is a solution for that. You have the rear view camera mirror up here. So that's nice to see. So something else we didn't i don't know if you were able to see it earlier i didn't mention it because i wasn't looking at it from the driver's seat since we kind of did things a little differently than we normally do but you have a head up display here and so that is something we didn't talk about earlier in the video but it is there nice and bright has some good information on it but overall um, so far i think it's pretty enjoyable to drive the ride quality seems to be good but one way or another, I will say one thing that I definitely have to give high marks to here with the Sequoia is that there is a lot of space. So plenty of room here. We're going to pull around here for just a second, get ready to go and see what happens as far as driving over the railroad tracks. Oh, that was actually pretty impressive. Normally when you drive over those railroad tracks, depending on what you're driving, you definitely know they are there. That definitely gave us a really good indication of the ride quality, at least here in the front seat. Very, very comfortable. And for those of you who are wondering why I'm only driving in today's video and Carrie's not, we have to get insurance information to the dealerships and we're going to start doing that a little more because number one, it would be beneficial for the video. And plus, like you probably want to see him in front of the camera more often. We did have a video from the Chicago Auto Show where I finally got him out there. And a lot of you liked that, and I did too. So hopefully he'll be in there more often, maybe more than me. That makes it easier for me because I don't have to talk anymore. <laughs> it's a trap. He just doesn't know it. But overall, a really enjoyable vehicle to drive. Seems to be pretty easy to see out of. I like the size of the side view mirrors. They're very large. That's a good thing. And the width is very important on that. And that's definitely something where Toyota is doing a great job. Nice, wide side view mirrors, easy to see out of. That's going to be beneficial to you in a multitude of ways. Uh, very comfortable seating, I'd say. What do you think? So a really well-balanced vehicle. We'll try and get to some lower trim levels here in the future. I know a lot of you like to see lower trim levels. We'll just have to see what comes in in the future at Yoakum Toyota. This was what was available today. So tell me what you think about the 2024 Toyota Sequoia Capstone. Is it worth your consideration? Curious to know what you think. And don't forget, if you want to come into Yoakum Toyota and maybe buy this model, there's a link in the description of the video to help you get going in that direction or maybe take a look at anything else that they have in inventory. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends here at Yoakum Toyota for loaning us this Sequoia for the day. Thanks to Kerry for getting behind the camera. We're going to be doing that a lot more often and we're going to get him in front of the camera more often. Tell him down in the comments that you want to see him in front of the camera more often. If you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure to hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. If you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do so. That way you don't miss any future videos, especially when Carrie's in front of the camera. Hint, hint, Carrie. He's really good. I want him doing more videos. And if you would like to learn more about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the, vi the video, not the vehicle, but the video that's on the screen right now, and we'll see you there.